What's up guys, Joe Youngblood here with Whitetail Habitat Solutions. Hope you guys are doing well. Today we are on water duty. It's gonna warm up today, I think almost a high of 80. So uh, we're gonna get ready, get this thing filled up and uh, loaded up in the truck. And then um, head out there, get the trees uh, watered, ready to go. Maybe finish some fencing and spray the food plots for the second time. So we'll talk about that. Now, this might not be the uh, easiest way to do it, but this is how I found uh, I could make it work with this 275 gallon IBC tote. Got some of these uh, rubber grommet coupler looking things. And uh, that's a reducer, I think, to two inches um, to one and a half. And then I have a one and a half to a one and a quarter on this six foot flexible hose. And uh, that's kind of enough to get this over my bed six feet and just gravity feed it basically to some of these trees with mulch get a couple of gallons per thing now bear in mind guys especially if you're going to be using a utv or anything like that it's nice this does have gallon marks but you know 125 gallons weighs about a thousand pounds so just make sure depending on the equipment you're using um, you're not going to do any damage because things get very heavy quickly i wouldn't go filling this up with 275 gallons right off the bat um but yeah so no, this should work we'll get it hooked up get out there and then start uh pretty much backing up to each uh tree let's go all right so to give you a pretty good example on what i'm doing i have my hose here that i showed you guys we have our tree and our fence here and i'm going to stick it on a lower square basically so that we can gravity feed here from the truck. And I'm just gonna turn this on some, and then come back here and start to water this a good bit. Doesn't work perfectly because it's just gravity fed, but it works well enough to get some water around the tree and the surface roots and the mulch. We're gonna have some high days in the 90s here coming up, so. This will be good for the newly planted trees. It's quite important. And I'll do this for, for all 35 pretty much. I'd like to do some for the cuttings as well. I just don't know how much time I'm gonna have here today to do so many trees. Um, and obviously fill the uh, tank up because you can only put so much in the truck bed. But I'm trying to do a couple of gallons per tree. Get these wet, turn it off, drive to the next one back up. Because this hose is only six feet, uh, I don't have a ton of wiggle room, so I gotta be pretty close to the tree. And uh, pretty pretty close to the tree and pretty uh, specific um, driving up to each one. So gives you a pretty good idea of how it's working. But if you find a way to use a longer hose, it definitely could be a little bit easier for you. Save your back a little as well. Bugs are getting kind of bad. Um, but our farmer did get his beans in and the rest of the, the field and towards the switch and everything. Um, and then this will looks like it's gonna be uh, a little bit more of a plot with the rest of our trees and, and a tree stand on this finger. So should be pretty dang cool. I did also get a um, an annual screen, as you can see here with these trees to kind of border the trees here, this last 15 or so feet. Um, but there's just no rain coming up. So I think we have plenty of time. If you guys have an annual screen, don't fret. It usually grows best in the uh, heat of the summer anyway. So we will um, we will kind of wait, get back for my next trip through the UP in Wisconsin next week and, and into the following week and uh, check the weather again, come back and uh, scratch up the surface, and get some some kind of screen in and, uh, and go from there. So it's gonna be a nice little hidey hole. Check these guys out, um, just a little under a month. They are about a foot or so from the uh, top of the tube. Somehow, I swear, some of these like, this was a pack of chestnuts and I see a couple red oaks mixed in here. Um, so I'm not entirely sure these look like chestnut. Um, just not quite entirely sure what all happened uh, in the packaging and then missing one of the persimmon and things like that. I don't know. I don't know if it was me, uh, White Tail Hill or whatever, but um, anyway, looks like we have a pretty good success rate. Some are just budding again, but 
got to keep an eye on a few, make sure they, make sure they, um, are successful so that uh, if they're not, we can use that grow guarantee. Um, remember guys, if you are ordering from them, it seems like a lot of you do, the grow guarantee does end like the end of June. So you have to let them know before then uh, if you want to get resupplied with any that didn't uh, didn't make it, so. All right guys, we just got done spraying the plots again for the second time. And just to kind of recap that real quick, right? We came out here when weeds were eight to 12 inches tall, it was probably a little over a month ago, something like that, and got all that sprayed down with glyphosate and 2,4-D, two quarts per acre glyphosate, one pint per acre and 2,4-D. Got a pretty good kill. There was a wet area and a couple spots that, obviously, it's nice when you come back the second time, you can see what you missed and, and make sure you hit those areas and things like that. So we also had the area the farmer didn't do, so same thing, sprayed all those again the second time with the same ratio. Now, Many of you going into your summer planting might not be using 2,4-D this second time, especially if you're not in an agricultural area and maybe you don't have a lot of glyphosate resistant weeds and you're able to kill everything with glyphosate. That's perfectly fine and in fact it's probably uh, advantageous and helpful for you because you can then spray glyphosate and go right into your summer planting. You can probably tell depending on when I post this video, which right now it is um, it's Memorial weekend so it's not even the end of May, it's May 28th. 29th something like that um so i'm not going to be planting here in southern michigan my my summer um cover stuff until mid-june so i have a couple weeks and the reason i'm spraying early again is because 2,4-D has that one to two week or so residual if you're spraying with the appropriate amounts so i'm here about two weeks early again i have a trip next week i leave uh for a while to see some clients through the up in wisconsin and the tail end of michigan i think going all the way around um so I wanted to make sure I got here a little early. I got this spraying done of all this stuff. The residual will fall off. So if you are in an ag area or you feel you run into mare's tail and a lot of different stuff that you want to spray and make sure you get a good kill with 2,4-D, come out a little early, get that done. Um, and then again, I will be back mid-June to scratch up the surface and get some uh, some buckwheat or a different cover in, a summer plow down blend. Any of those will really work. Um, I'm going to be running uh, short on time, so I might just grab some buckwheat for this year and again uh, get that uh, in the ground and get that growing, the organic matter and the roots and everything that's going to help our soil. And uh, then we're off to the races. We can uh, get that in right before a good rain, so I'll be monitoring that. I've talked to you guys a little bit, and the reason I'm out here watering trees is because the next 10 days plus and really the previous week, we have not gotten any rain. So I know that before I leave, it's going to be a struggle, especially for these newly planted things. Um, you know, going into this drought. So I got out there, didn't get everything, but I, I got, you know, most of the trees and stuff that um, I could for now. And uh, I need to finish also fencing some of these trees. Uh, some are barely budding out. Others, leaves are literally about to come out of the tree tube already. So it's kind of funny, you know, besides tree species, but also the soil and, and uh, hydration and how just that plant is transplanting really so that was exciting to see pretty neat and and definitely kicking my butt a little to get these fenced because once those leaves start coming out of the tube if these aren't fenced deer will be coming right up to it and eating it and things like that um also a a uh, fellow uh subscriber happened to mention that in wisconsin and also in michigan i did look it up there is a, a beetle um kind of blanking on the name maybe a japanese beetle or something like that but they basically uh take over a lot of the um, uh, inner part of the tube and can kill the tree and they really uh, attract a lot of their other uh, beetle friends. It's kind of just like a, a compounding effect. So if you do start to notice this, it might be a reason to get rid of the tree tubes. Um, I'm gonna try and keep an eye on it for now, at least get these trees established. Still worried if there's any critters that can get through my fence and kind of get that bark and ruin the tree anyway. So. As always some kind of issue or a problem. Just found some carpenter bees flying around the shed. Always something going on, as you guys know, to take care of. So anyway, I'm happy to get these, these plots sprayed for the second time. We're gonna have our, our buckwheat planting here in a couple of weeks, right before a good rain at 50 to 60 pounds per acre. Um, gonna finish these fenced off trees so they are good to go. Take care of your plantings, guys, and get them watered. If you're noticing a drought before, you know we should have some more uh, summer rains and showers and stuff coming, it's only May. Um, but could even be worse in July and, and things like that end of June. Um, so keep an eye out and uh, hopefully things are taken off for you and you guys are having a lot of fun with it. So any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. If you like uh, following along with this stuff 
and uh, it'll be hunting season before we know it. See you guys.